Hello, everyone. We're just going to give about one or two minutes for everybody to come on in and get situated. So welcome to today's CLE, the Attorney's Guide to Microsoft Word uh, for the Florida Bar. So thank you, Florida, for having me back. But just again, we're going to give it about a minute, minute, 30 seconds for everybody to get on in. You're welcome to use the chat and tell me where in Florida you're watching from or if you're on vacation right now. I don't know why you'd be watching a CLE, but I guess props to you. But tell me where you're watching from. I'm actually here in Austin, Texas. I think the high today is going to be 60, so that's nice. A lot of my friends are in frigid Chicago. A lot of my smokeball crew is and that uh, they said something about the high being zero, which sounds absolutely horrific and I would never do that. Ooh, Palm Beach County. I would take that right now too. Uh, most of my family lives around in and around Daytona Beach uh, working for NASCAR, which is a very nice thing. I think I'm going to make it to Talladega this year. Fingers crossed. Oh, Tennessee. Nice. Oh, cold. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair, Paula. I can understand that. All right, we'll just give it about 30 seconds. So grab a tea, grab a coffee sit back. I'm also going to say this uh, when we start it too, but if you, especially if you have dual monitors, so if you have two screens, the one of the best things that you can do during the CLE is to have a screen open uh, with a Microsoft Word document in it. It can be any Word document that just has a little bit of text on it. So maybe you have a brief that you're working on that's causing you stress, <laughs> but uh, maybe make a copy of that and open that up because I'll be taking you through these kind of tips and tricks and it's always cool. Uh, and I think it kind of sticks in your brain more if you already have your document open and you're kind of trying it out as we're going along as I'm going through it with you. see. Oh, and Amy, yes, it is going to be recorded. I'll go through that on the housekeeping slide. Uh, so it'll be available on Legal Fuel after today's live CLE. Coming to you live. All right, let's do this. So I'm going to exit out of the webinar chat and we are going to get started. So welcome everyone to today's CLE, the Attorney's Guide to Microsoft Word. Could have been anywhere in the world and you're here talking about Microsoft Word, everyone's favorite. A uh, little bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions, I'm going to get to those live, 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 live at the very end of this CLE. So the last uh, 10 or so minutes, I will be uh, addressing your questions. So if you have any as we go along, please put that into the Q&A box that's on your Zoom. So Q&A, not so much chat. It's harder for me to monitor the chat box and sometimes can get a little bit unruly. Uh, so instead, put those questions into that Q&A box. And again, I'll get to those at the very end of today's session. And then also the most one of the most important things too, the recording and the slides are going to be available on Legal Fuel on your Legal Fuel account uh, at the end of the presentation. So after this CLE is over, uh, you will be able to get the recording and the slides. And also too, everyone's favorite and what we're all here for. Uh, your course number I am going to give you. I feel like I am the keeper of secrets. I'm going to give you the course number at the very end of today's CLE session. So I'll probably around the last maybe 10 or so minutes, 15 or so minutes. The fun is in not knowing when, uh, but I will be giving you that course number too if you don't already have it. All right, a little bit about me before we begin. My name is Jordan Turk. I am a practicing family law attorney down here in Texas. So, you know, all the drama all the time. And if there's any other family law attorneys watching this right now, uh, I feel your pain because I know what happens around the holidays and I know the emergency, emergency, I say in quotation marks, uh, filings that your clients uh, want you to do. And so it's always a fun time. It's a good enforcement time us when it comes to the holidays, so I get it. Uh, but in addition to being a practicing family law attorney, I am also the legal technology advisor over here at Smokeball. And for those who are unfamiliar with what Smokeball is, we are an all-in-one cloud-based practice management systems for, I can't talk, practice management system for attorneys. And I use this in my practice. My old firm is now completely uh, a Smokeball fanatic zealot, uh, everybody there. But essentially what it does is it manage, manages all of your day-to-day -day law firm tasks. So from workflows to business operations to automating pleadings, drafting discovery, you know, going through and getting you through to final trial, storing all your documents, communicating with your clients, collecting your money because for some reason no one wants to pay their divorce attorney. Very strange. So billing, invoicing, three-way trust account reconciliation, we help you through all of it. So it really is just a one-stop shop when it comes to your entire firm, because that was really frustrating to me when I was practicing. We probably used about 
eight to 10 different pieces of legal technology software, which means that I had to be responsible for eight to 10 different logins. And it was very frustrating to me. I didn't even know that practice management systems existed because I was in my own little bubble. And so this has been amazing. That's ultimately what brought me here to Smokeball is finding out that this existed. So very cool. If you want to learn more about it, more about what we do, what a practice management system even is, I will have a poll at the very end of today's CLE where you can select that somebody from Smokeball reach out to you with more information about what we do. But it's an incredible product, super powerful, highly recommend that you look into it. And then also just as an added benefit and shameless plug that we are actually an approved member benefit provider for the Florida Bar. So if you've been on my CLEs before with Florida Bar, you know this already, but this also means that you get a 10% discount on our services. So very, very good for you. Highly recommend that you look into that. If you want to learn more about it, uh, you can visit the link that Kathy will be popping in the chat, or you can scan this QR code with your phone and that'll take you to the landing page that has more information about that partnership. All right, so here's the nitty gritty and what we're getting into. So all of the slides, you're going to be provided with a copy if you haven't already. The slides are going to be mostly just for reference. So I'm actually going to be diving into a an actual Microsoft Word document uh, for this whole presentation and this entire CLE mostly. And so that you can see in real time how this works and not just look at screenshots and be bored out of your mind for you know 45 minutes. So I'll actually be getting into Microsoft Word when you have questions or if there's something that you ever want to reference, like, hey, what is a clipboard? How do I find it again? What's a quick access toolbar? All of this will be within your slides. So you can use them as a reference, but we're gonna be getting into the actual program of Microsoft Word for this specific CLE. All right, and without further ado, I'm gonna switch screens and we're gonna get into our Microsoft Word. Here we go. Sure. I'm getting so much better at Zoom. Look at me go. All right, so you should be seeing, hopefully, where'd it go? There we go. All righty, so you should be seeing this succession blog. I'm going to turn on a little highlighter for y'all. Here we go. Da, 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 da. All right. And so this is just a random blog that I wrote about attorney succession. Uh, super fun for y'all. Do not read it. You do not have to. There's probably typos in there. This is just meant for example purposes. It was just something that I had on my computer. So I mentioned at the very beginning of this CLE, but if you are able to and you have dual monitors especially, I'd open up a Word document that you have, just a random one that has a little bit of text in it so that you can go through it as I'm going through this with you, I'm also just going to turn off my camera. There's no point to have this on. Uh, so as we go through this, you can also be going through it with me. And I think that's the easiest way. It makes things stick in your brain a little bit more. And so my personal goal as we get started here is I, especially because I work from my laptop a lot, depending on where I am, I want to minimize my mouse use as much as possible, right? As I'm typing already. I don't want to have to go and use my mouse a million times, especially if I have a trackpad. It just gets difficult. And especially, for instance, if I'm trying to eat at the same time and those oils are getting on my hand and then on my computer, it just becomes uh, absolutely rage inducing to try to use my computer and my trackpad or my mouse pad on here. So that's going to be one of the best things that you could possibly do as far as efficiency is concerned and you being able to go from your office where you have your monitors and your keyboard to your laptop. It's all going to be a lot easier if you can minimize the use of your mouse pad, right? So that's my little caveat before we get started. And look, I know a lot of us are still incredibly frustrated with Word, despite the fact that we've now had to use this for the vast majority of our practice, unless you're an opposing counsel that I had two years ago who still used their typewriter. And that uh, really absolutely made me apoplectic. But anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, but I know there's a lot of things that kind of really can still send you into a rage spiral. And a lot of us don't take the time to sit down as attorneys and figure out what the best things to do in Microsoft Word would be. And turns out there's a lot of functionality. There's a lot of stuff that you can do that will make your life easier. So first of all, we're going to start with keyboard shortcuts. So the trick to these is repetition, repetition, repetition. And keyboard shortcuts, you know, they're going to be the easiest thing for you to learn. So for instance, let's say you want to copy this entire paragraph. Everybody should know this, but you need to get more familiar with it. On your keyboard, that's going to be Control C. So you're going to hold down Control and click on the letter key of C, and that's going to copy 
that text that you just highlighted. To paste it, that's going to be control hold down V as in Victor. So that's how you paste that. Now say I didn't mean to do that. Oh, oopsie. That's going to be to undo anything so that you don't have to go all the way up here, you know, in the upper left hand corner and click undo every time you need to, you know, you made an oopsie. Instead, you're just going to say control Z as in zebra. And that's going to completely delete that paragraph that you had erroneously pasted. So control Z is probably going to be your absolute best friend. Control C is great, uh, but control Z as in zebra is the best thing that you could ever ever memorize on here. It just needs to become muscle memory to you when you do control C as in copy and control V as in to paste and then control Z to undo. Memorize control Z. At a minimum, memorize control Z and that's what your undo means, but it's lovely. There's also one that's called cut, which is control X, which completely eliminates that paragraph while also copying it. I never really use cut because to me it just seems ridiculous. So I'm just going to undo that. And so control Z and we'll put that paragraph back. So those are going to be your biggest ones that you'll end up using just as shortcuts. Those are in the slides for you. So do not worry about that. You'll have that as reference. What I suggest that you do is start using these every day just so that they can become muscle memory for you. So within a couple days or within a week, you'll have this down pat, I promise you. All right, and then the other one that you'll end up using a lot is control N as in Nancy. And that gives you a brand new document. So instead of having to go to file and click new and do all of that mess, right? Instead, you can just, no matter where you are, just click control or control and then N as in Nancy. And that's what gets you a brand new document. And it is a lovely, highly, highly recommend that one too. Now here are some fun ones. So say you're in the middle of your document, especially if you're in a brief and let's say you have an appellate brief and you're on page 15 out of 20 and you're trying to get back to the beginning and you don't want to have to keep scrolling all the way up, right? Let's say that there's a lot of things to scroll up on. So what you can do instead is you see those keys that are usually above your, your uh, arrow keys where it says insert, home, delete, and page up and page down, right? Well, these things actually do something. <laughs> so if you, let's say you're in the middle of your document and you want to go all the way up to the very beginning of your brief or the very beginning of your document, hold down control and hold down home. And that's going to send you to the very beginning of your document. And then you might ask, oh, what does control N do? Exactly what you think. So control N will send you to the very last part of your document. So these are really great to just kind of navigate around your document, especially if it's voluminous and you have a bunch of pages. Now, another one that I use a lot that a lot of people did not realize, it took me years to even realize this functionality in Microsoft Word, is highlighting a sentence. So if you click on control, which by the way, the control key is your best friend. So if you click on control and you click on one word in a sentence, it will highlight that entire sentence. So again, hold down control, click once on any word in that sentence, and it is going to highlight that entire sentence. So this is lovely for me when I am that person who has shaky fingers, especially on my trackpad, you know, for my uh, laptop where I always overdo it and I'm trying to copy this, there's a better way than having to drag your mouse across all of the stuff to get these sentences. And it's just control, one click, there's your entire sentence, which is lovely. If you control, double click on something, that will give you the word. It will highlight that, sp that particular word. So I want to highlight transition. I hold down control, click twice on that word, and there it goes, which is Lovely. And again, great if you don't have steady fingers like I do not. Uh, and then say you want to figure out what happens when you triple click on a word. Triple clicking on a word will highlight that entire paragraph. So again, you don't have to worry about starting and stopping. You don't have to worry about going over. It will literally, any, any word in that paragraph, just control click on it three times. It will highlight the entire paragraph, which is again, lovely. Now let's say you're in the middle of a document. And you know what? I want to highlight this entire this entire section of a document until the end of the document. So from here until the end, I would like to highlight it. How do I do that? You can do Control Shift and End, and that will give you that section of the document. So the key there is to make sure that your mouse is in the right place. So where you put your cursor is where you want it to start highlighting, right? But again, that's just going to be Control Shift End, and that's going to give you 
that highlighting right there, which is, again, very, very nice. If you want to highlight an entire document or entire piece of something, control A. That's going to also be your best friend <laughs> is control A. So again, I want to highlight the entire document, control A. And those are going to be the most used keyboard shortcuts that you will ever use when you are practicing. But if you have others that you use a lot, make sure to leave a comment on there. I'd love to know what you use. All right, so moving on to the quick access toolbar. And so this is something that you see every day <laughs> that you have Word open, but you never mess with it because you don't really know that you can or what it does. And so the quick access toolbar, if you look up into the upper left-hand corner on the very top of your Microsoft Word, this is what is called a quick access toolbar. This is what it looks like in its kind of default form, right? And so what people do not realize is you can customize it. And if you drag your mouse over any of these, it will give you a full description of what it does, right? So, hey, here's open, there's auto save, there's undo, there's redo, things like that. So if you just hover your mouse over it, it'll tell you exactly uh, what these things are. So what a lot of attorneys don't know, what a lot of people who use Word, frankly, don't know is that you can completely customize it. Let's see, so for instance, if you want to, well, first of all, what you should be doing is click on show below the ribbon. And what this does is it takes it from here and puts it down here. And your quick access toolbar is here. And you'll notice that this is a lot easier because instead of having to hover over these symbols, it actually tells you what they are because there's more room, right? So again, I'm going to show you that real quick where just click on that down arrow, that itty bitty arrow, and then click show below the ribbon. And this is going to be a lot easier for you. So right now it's just save, undo typing, redo, open, and auto save, right? That's what I have kind of as just a default. And here's the deal. If you ever want to not have something on here, the right click in Microsoft Word is your best friend. So if you right click, you can remove anything you want from this custom access toolbar or quick access toolbar, anything you want. You can delete it, completely customize it. It is yours. Right click is actually a really important function when it comes to Microsoft Word. So if you aren't familiar with it or you never really right click on things, now is your chance to kind of play around with that because it's very powerful in Microsoft programs in general. Right click is definitely your best friend. All right, so what I would do here and what I would suggest to you is you want to customize this as much as you can. So think about all the things that you do on a regular basis where you just want quick access to it or easy access to something. So maybe that's something like when you open up a new document, say you don't want to have to click on, you don't want to have to say control N, right? So instead you want to be able to click on something completely fine, you can add that to the quick access toolbar. And again, if you are regretting it or you don't really use it anymore, remove it. It's super easy. Now, what you should consider doing is you can customize this. Any command that's basically available in Microsoft Word is available to be put on this quick access toolbar. So what I would suggest is you go to more commands. And then instead of popular commands, say all commands and really kind of figure out, and so it gives you an incredible amount of <laughs> things that you can use to customize it. But really, I encourage you to go through here or at least think about what you use in Microsoft Word enough or what would be easier for you. So for instance, let's see here. Ah, yeah, this would be one that I use a lot, right? I want to email something as a PDF attachment once I'm done writing it in Word. So I'm gonna add that to my quick access toolbar because that's a that's a good one for me. As is, you know, opening up that new document, the blank document, also a good one. So let me just find that real quick again. Du, 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 du. La, da, 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 da. Yes, new blank document. I'm going to add that too. And then there's a couple that I'm going to add for later that I think that uh, you should add too, and that will become very readily apparent as we go through this. But one is going to be symbol. Dun, 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 dun. ABC order. Okay, let's find this. See, it's just too much. There's too much. Here we go. So then there's going to be symbol. So I'm going to add that too. And then also add in some autocorrect options. I would suggest you do this too. And again, I'll explain that. I'll explain why uh, in a little bit. So adding in the autocorrect options. 
And so that will come into play later for us too, I promise. All right, and then we're gonna say okay to those. And you see they get automatically added on your quick access toolbar. So really anything that you use all the time. So maybe it's the paragraph tool or you know, maybe yes, you want to email as an attachment. Yes, you want to open up a new document because you do that a lot. Add that to your quick access toolbar. You can change this at any time. Removing it is just a click away. Super, super easy. Highly, highly recommended. So anything that you utilize on an everyday basis, do it. So for instance, maybe sometimes you want that paragraph button down here on the quick access toolbar because you're never on the home screen. Maybe you're always on the insert screen or you're always on the layout screen, but you still want to use that paragraph button. Fine, you can put that on your quick access toolbar. You can add footnotes to your quick access toolbar, anything that you want, literally that's available in Microsoft Word. All right, so then let's move on now that we've got through that, your quick access toolbar and you've got that set up. Now we're going to talk about automation a little bit. Ooh, everybody's favorite hot button topic, especially as we're going into uh, 2024 and automation is becoming uh, more and more prevalent, especially uh, with lawyers and law firms. So for this is kind of what I would consider baby automation. Uh, and so it's kind of, you know, dipping your toe in the sand of automation waters because a lot of people don't realize that Microsoft Word can actually kind of do a little bit of automation for you. So let's say that you want to, let's say that you've drafted all of these discovery responses or that you have a template that you use for your standard discovery responses, right? Maybe it's an, or maybe it's an objection sheet that you use or objection, you know, readily available or easily available by the other party. And you use this all the time, right? So these are templates that you use every day <laughs> when it comes to your discovery. And usually you're pulling it from your own kind of internal firm template that you have on the firm drive, things like that. You can actually put these into Microsoft Word. And so how do you do that? You block out the text that you want to keep. And let's say that this is, you know, your template text or a template clause that you use all the time. You can put it in there. And then Anything that you do can be saved to use again in the future. So you can do this via, you know, if there's certain discovery responses or objections that you want, maybe it's your signature block, maybe it's a case caption style, right? Or any type of clause uh, that you're usually constantly taking from another document and opening from, you know, a template that's just somewhere existing in your firm. You can, again, put all those into Microsoft Word. So you're going to highlight all of it that you want to save. And then you're going to the insert ribbon up top. So right next to your home one. And then you're going to go to quick parts. And once you do quick parts, go to auto text. And you're going to save the selection to your auto text gallery. And let's just pretend that this is just a discovery objection. So we're going to name it discovery objection. Super simple. Name it that way. And then you can say OK. And now that it's been saved into your quick parts, which I think I actually definitely might have saved both. Yes, okay, good. And so that's now saved in there as part of your, as part of your quote unquote automation. So then you might be wondering, well, how do I recall that? <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna remember this entire paragraph or what if it's multiple objections that I had in the template? Completely fine. It matter, the only thing that matters is what you named it. So remember that we named it discovery objections. So guess what? I'm gonna start typing in discovery objections and you'll see that this appears right here up top where it says press enter to insert. And then all I'll have to all I have to do is say enter and that pops up. Which is again very lovely. So you really just have to remember that hey, I want this template and it's my discovery objection template and so you start typing in discovery objection, press enter and it will happen. Or you can do the code word, so discovery objections because remember that's what we titled it and then press F3 And now, of course, oh, I disabled that. Never mind, I disabled it. But if you type in discovery objection and then press F3, if it hasn't been disabled, which I did it, uh, it will then invoke it too and it'll paste it in there too. So that's kind of how you go through automation with Microsoft Word. So the cool thing about it is basically just take some time in the next couple weeks to really sit down and put all of this into your Quick Parts auto text gallery. And then also too, bear in mind that you can add that to the ribbon you, or add this to your quick access toolbar. So if you just want to take some time and sit down this weekend or next and start populating all these templates into your auto text, into the quick parts, you absolutely can. Super easy to just add it here because it can be a part of your toolbar. 
So highly, highly recommend that, especially for signature blocks and things like that, which are tedious that you're usually copying and pasting from another document anyway. Very easy to just be able to put that into your Microsoft Word. I will say a quick caveat to all of this is that Quick Parts in this auto text does not remember the formatting of the document that it came from. So if the document that it came from was Times New Roman and you are pasting it into something that is Calibri, it's going to keep that Calibri. So just keep that in mind too. It's going to adapt, it's going to, adapt to the version of the document that you're pasting it into. Another kind of automation adjacent thing to do would be find and replace. So go to your home ribbon. And this is something that everybody needs to know how to do. It will save you a bunch of time and headaches, I promise you. But let's see here. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so let's say that you want to replace every word in here that's a, that has attorneys in it and replace it with lawyers. You can do that easily instead of having to find each specific one and just say, I want you to find attorneys and I want you to say lawyers instead. And then you can click on replace all. And it says we've made five, and replace, five replacements total. And so everything has been replaced from attorneys to lawyers. So I'm going to control Z that because I'm undoing it. But the benefit here you can imagine is if you have a form that you are working on. Took me a minute to spell petitioner. Oof. And then let's say, so let's say that you have a form that you're working on, like here in Texas, I think Florida is the same way, where you have these templates that will have, you know, insert petitioner name or respondent name or plaintiff name or defendant name. So finding and replacing means that you can go in every instance that it says petitioner, it can be replaced with your client's name. Same if it said respondent, it would be with the opposing party's name. And so you can imagine that this is super powerful to be able to do. I will say a word of caution uh, for finding and replacing is that it does not prevent human error. And so there was a time when I was doing a prenup and to my mortification, <laughs> I was supposed to say petitioner, or I was supposed to say, you know, party one, and I put in my client's name and accidentally added an extra S onto the end of it. And, you know, obviously this was a 40 or 50 page document. His name or her name was on every single page. And so I didn't catch it until we were all sitting down to sign it. And to my utmost mortification, my client noticed that his name was misspelled and that on every single copy of this, and bear in mind, opposing counsel's there, opposing parties there, videographer is there, court reporter is there. It was really great. And I wanted to die <laughs> essentially but so be very very careful find and replace it's great but it doesn't mean that you don't have to go through and double check your work and then actually as we're talking about as we're talking about uh automation i'm just gonna switch my screen here because look at us go da -da -da -da. all right here we go really great. I know exactly how to use <laughs> Microsoft's, or I know exactly how to use Zoom. Okay, so switch screen. This is always a little fun time. Okay, here we go. So when it comes to automation, it's like I just said, for Microsoft Word especially, that's almost like dipping your toe into the automation water. So using finding and find and replace is great. Being able to use auto text from that quick parts gallery. It's great. Highly, highly recommend that you do that. If this is kind of your first foray into automation and you don't really have any other thing in place or you're not using a practice management system, highly, highly recommend it. And really the key is to get as familiar as possible with it. So if you're, again, if it's something popular like signature blocks or case styles, clauses that you constantly use, add it to your auto text. Right. Add and then also add that to your, also add that to your uh, custom or quick access toolbar. So if you're wondering, then okay, well, if that's kind of what automation is, and we already went over finding and replacing, and just please be very careful and don't be like me as I was in that prenuptial agreement. Oh God, I still want to die. Okay, so we're not going to talk about my embarrassment anymore. Um, so for automate more automation examples, so say that you were looking at, hey, what does this look like if I'm using an actual program for it? What is automation in actuality? So what's the upgrade essentially for Microsoft Word? 
this is generally what it looks like. So you're going to put in everybody's information at the beginning. And then basically for every other thing that you pull, every other pleading that you pull in that case, every other document that you open to draft, all of the relevant information is already auto-populated into that for you. So you never have to do find and replace again. You never have to do copy paste ever again. Uh, when it comes to these types of documents, everything is already stored in the system. So say I need to do you know, a motion to enforce, I can do that, pull it up and guess what? All of that information is already in there about petitioner name, respondent name, the case style, signature blocks, everything else is already in there. So all I have to do is substantive lawyer work where I just need to pick and choose what provisions and things like that I want in there. But the document itself is already ready to go. All I have to do is basically be a lawyer <laughs> and look at the provisions that I need. So all, essentially all of the admin tasks, quote unquote, that you have to deal with when you're drafting a document is eliminated if you're using something that has automation. So whether that be Smokeball or another thing that's in the field, obviously I'm biased, uh, but that's exactly what it does. That's kind of what automation is. So it just takes away that admin work, also takes away that risk of human error, uh, like I had at my prenuptial agreement meeting, <laughs> where because it's already done for you. And it was done at the very beginning of the case. So you never have to wonder about if this is misspelled or if you know my legal assistant did this right or not. Did they put the parties and the address in there? Are those all correct? All of those are going to be correct because all of that information was input at the very beginning of the case. So it's kind of a set it and forget it type of deal. And this is just more of automation examples. So like, for instance, when you pull up a document and you just want to write a letter to opposing counsel or a letter to your client, if you pull it up in a system that has document automation, all of that will automatically be filled in. The date is automatically updated. The name and address is automatically updated because this is pulled from your case. Same with the uh, same with the subject line and the heading, your signature, things like that. All of that can already be done and pre-populated for you so that literally all you have to do is write your letter. Amazing, because again, I was really bad at copy pasting and especially with case styles. One time I copy pasted a case style, did not realize it, but instead of saying it, saying in the district in the district court of so and so, Texas, it said Texas with two S's. And so this is a common issue with me. And again, I'm mortified because that's now on a final order. And again, I'm just going to go into my own mortification corner from that. But if I had used something like Smokeball at the time, if I'd had it, this would not have been an issue because it does it right every time since it's automated. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our Word document. See screen two, here we go. All right, and we're back to succession. <laughs> so next thing, that I would like to talk about is the clipboard. Da, 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 da. All right, here we go. So the clipboard is something that's very, ooh, I need to speed through some of, oh no, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so I thought we were gonna have to skip stuff, but I promise I'm gonna hurry. All right, so the clipboard is something that is a device that temporarily stores things for you up to, tw or up to 24 things, right? So that you can cut or copy and it will store it for you. So for instance, if I wanted to, copy this paragraph. I can, I can copy it and it's going to go into my clipboard and then I can use it for later. I can delete this, but it's still going to be saved to my clipboard, things like that. Now, the key to the clipboard is you have to turn it on. And so a lot of people don't realize that. So go to your home ribbon. So remember upper left-hand corner, this ribbon, that's going to be home and you'll click on that. And then you'll click on clipboard and you'll click on what Adriana Linares calls this uh, the insultingly small button. So this little arrow here uh, right next to clipboard, you're going to click on that and see it's going to open your clipboard. And so these are things that we've already copy pasted today. So you can clear those, but essentially it will store up to 24 things that you have copied or that you've cut, right? So in order to turn it on, mine is already turned on, but by default, it's not for you. So once you're in clipboard, go to options, and then you're going to check all of these off. So give everybody a second if you have that open next to you, but click all of them so that you have access to that. And once you do that and you check everything off, now you have enabled this kind of collector of copy and pasted text. And so all you have to do uh, to put something on a clipboard is highlight it and then control C to copy and it will populate onto your clipboard, which is really, really cool, super, super fun. Now. To make this even cooler, let's say you, you are in Westlaw 
and you are, oops, oh, I put that into two pages. All right. So let's say you're in Westlaw and you have a case and you're trying to pull some quotes from it, right? And Westlaw has that wonderful thing where every time you try to copy it, it asks you 5 million things and it's actually very annoying. Uh, but so let's say you wanted to keep everything in one place. You didn't want to necessarily paste it into a document yet, right? Or really anything that you see online. Well, the wonderful thing about Clipboard is it can be copied from anywhere. So let's say you have this case open. This is a case that haunted me when all year of law school. So congratulations, here it is, because I don't want to open Westlaw right now. But so let's say you want to highlight maybe one of the propositions here for this case, Armory versus Delamire. I will talk about my trauma in relation to this case later, uh, if you want to hear it. But essentially, you can copy it. So let's say you're going to highlight this, Control C, and guess what? that's now going to go straight into your clipboard. So that's why it's so powerful too, right? Anything that you want can be copied here. So that means if you wanna do five different sentences from this case, you can control C and all of them will be copied here and you don't necessarily have to paste them until you want to. And also this applies not only to text, but also to pictures. Let's say on Smokeball, I'm going to right click on smoke ball and say I want to copy this image. It's copyrighted. Please do not use it. But, but let's say copy image. And then guess what? It's going to come up here. Oop. Oop, nope. Control Z on that one. Well, usually it would. Maybe there's some stuff. Ah, oh, I just did this before. How annoying. There we go. Okay, so that's just something else that was on the page. But so that pops up. And you can input that, you can insert that too. So you can also do these with pictures. Again, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm going to say control Z on that. So you can do it with pictures, text, anything you want. Again, it will store up to 24, it will store up to 24 of these clips, right? So just make sure you do that and that you don't exceed it. Otherwise it's going to start deleting them. But this is a very, very powerful tool that not enough people utilize in my opinion. But then going back to this document, so let's say you want to insert one of these things that you have just saved. Super easy, the way to do it is just to, wherever your cursor is, is wherever it's going to paste, right? And that's it. So super, super easy, very, very fun to kind of play around with, but just be cognizant of that. Wherever you want to paste it, your cursor has to be there, right? Otherwise, the computer has to know what you want to do with it, right? So just be, uh, be cognizant of that. Oh, also too, you can't store this. So basically once you log out, Microsoft Word will erase all of these clippings. So be very careful. And if you want, like say you're like, oh no, I need to save all of these uh, for, you know, for tomorrow or I wanna be able to still have access to them. Super easy, open up a new document and your clipboard stays. Your clipboard stays the same no matter what you have open, right? So it's like it's always going to be the same just because you open up a new document doesn't mean you get a new clipboard. It still retains all of the information that you've already saved. So then you can paste all of these and then you can go and you can save as and say that these are, you know, going to be like yesterday's clippings and things like that. So you can label it that and save that onto your computer so that you don't lose those clippings if you didn't want to, right? So let's just exit out of that one. But that's going to be the easiest way to keep track of your clippings if you don't want to lose them. All right, now let's go. Oh, I'm going to, oh, I am, I am running late. Okay, on this one. So I'm going to zoom through uh, some of these options real quick when it comes to paste options. So control V also gets you, you know, that's how you paste, but we're going to go into some fun stuff with this. So I'm going to say control, control C to copy this text, and then I'm going to paste it, control V. Now you'll notice that when you paste it, you get this little pop-up, this little control pop-up. You can click on that and it will give you your options as far as pasting. So it'll give you about four options each time. The first option, and it will kind of actually, and if you uh, hover over this, this it will give you a preview of what each of these look like when you've pasted this, uh, when you've pasted this paragraph in. So the first option is going to keep source formatting. I hate this. So this basically means that you are pasting it exactly the way that you found it. It's going to keep the formatting of the original document that you that you got it from, not the one that you have open. Now the next one, merge source formatting, is going to be the one that you're going to use most often, right? Because you 
It means that what you are pasting into this document, it will adhere to the, the default settings of this document. So if the document that you were taking the text from was Times New Roman, and the document that you are pasting it into is Calibri, it will match Calibri and not Times New Roman, whereas keep source formatting would have kept Times New Roman, right? So merge source formatting is going to be your best friend. There's also picture, which you'll likely never use, and it's kind of trash because if you do that, it means that you can't edit it, can't really do anything. So if it was something that you need to not be able to edit, then that's fine. But that's what picture is, so it's kind of annoying. Uh, and, then, and then the last one is just keep text only. So keep text only is fine, but bear in mind that it gets rid of any type of extraneous formatting uh, that you would have in the prior text. It gets rid of bolding and links and things like that. So it's not necessarily ideal, especially if it's like a case caption and things like that or a citation. So really what you want, again, is merge formatting. I'm going to undo that one. All right. So what I will say too on here is let's go up here. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. Yeah. So if you go to your home ribbon again, go to your and you'll see these paste options up here too. So same options come up here and that'll give you, you know, the exact same options that we talked about. What I want you to look at though is to set default paste. And this will become your best friend. So go down to this cut, copy, paste section here. And normally this has already been changed for me. The default is that this is keep source formatting, which drives me up the wall. Do not do that. So change all of these to merge formatting. And to, unless the pasting between documents when style and definition, uh, when style definitions conflict, do keep text only, but everything else on here, merge formatting, merge formatting, merge formatting. And you can thank me later. And that will be your new default, but definitely, definitely change that. And just play around with all three here, but these are the copy paste functions are going to be great. So now that you've switched the default paste functions, that means when you do control V, it will do merge formatting as opposed to keep source formatting. So that's going to be the biggest thing to do. Biggest thing for me uh, to not, you know, send me into a rage spiral. All right. And before we get to Q&A real quick, I'm going to go through some of my favorite things and hopefully I can come back to that if we have time and questions allow. So some of my favorite tips <laughs> is undoing very annoying shortcuts. So what do I mean by that? If I'm just trying to cite a statute and I say, okay, subsection E, I don't mean Euro. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to cite a statute C, subsection C, I don't mean copyright. So this is very annoying for me and really honestly is uh, rage inducing. So you can fix this though. And so your first kind of line of defense is if you do you know, subsection E, and it corrects to that, you can click control Z, undo, control Z, control Z, bruh, and that'll bring you back to that subsection. Same if you do that with that, with the copyright, control Z, undo, that'll undo that for you. However, I would like to fix that completely because I find it very annoying. So what you can do instead is you go to, dun, 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 dun. all right, so you go to your insert ribbon, go to symbol, and go to more symbols. So let me bring this over because for some reason it popped up on the other screen. All right, hopefully y'all can see that. So this kind of gives you your list of symbols. And right, right now we were looking at the E for the Euro one. And then, so what you're going to do is click on that and then click on autocorrect. And you can actually delete these. Yes, you can do it, anything you want. So for instance, I don't want C to, subsection C to, uh, you know, autocorrect to copyright. So I'm going to delete that. I'm also going to delete E, you know, autocorrecting to Euro, or Euros because I don't need that. So I'm going to delete that too. I'm going to say OK and then close. So now when I do E, all I get is subsection E and subsection C. And look at that. We've now completely erased some of the, the worst headaches that I have. Also, you can add in better shortcuts. So for instance, go back to the symbols tab on the insert ribbon, click on more symbols. And guess what? I use this section symbol all the time when I'm drafting, right? So what I'm going to do is click on that section symbol, go to autocorrect. And I want to say anytime I type this, I want it to autocorrect to section. And so I'm going to click add and then OK, and then I'm going to close. And guess what? Every time I type that now, it autocorrects to that section uh, symbol, 
which is the best thing that I did ever <laughs> was really adding that as an autocorrect option. So highly, highly, highly recommend that you do that. And just pretty much anything that you use uh, symbol-wise, make it into an autocorrect. It's the best thing that you could possibly do. Now, real quick, too, I want to talk about securing documents uh, because that's a big thing, especially at my old firm where we had people constantly saving over things or we have clients that would want to make some changes that we didn't want them to make. So how do you secure documents or secure uh, any type of uh, well, yes, how do you just secure documents? Okay, so you go to the review ribbon on your or the review uh, tab on your home ribbon right here. And then look at the upper right-hand corner. It says restrict editing. And you can allow these restrictions. So allow only this type of editing in the document. And then you can say no changes. It's going to be what they call a read only document. And then you just go down and you can make exceptions and things like that, you know, for people in your firm, if you wanted to and things like that. But once you click no changes, read only say yes, start enforcing protection. It will automatically start that when you save it and say you want to send it to your client, it will automatically save it as a read-only document that they cannot mess with. So essentially, too, if you have templates on your firm drive that you are tired of your associates saving over, um, not that that happened to us or anything uh, prior to using Smokeball, but yeah, this happened all the time and it was terrible. So you can prevent that by making it a read-only file so that they can copy text from it, but they can't edit it from the document, right? So that's going to be a big one for you, too. Let's just get out of that one. Also, a lot of questions about metadata now. A lot more uh, state bars are incorporating this and saying you need to be removing it uh, when you are sending something, say, to opposing counsel for, let's say, discovery responses and things like that or motions, things like that. You need to be removing the metadata. Super, super easy. Go to File in the upper left-hand corner. <laughs> Excuse me. And then go to Info. And then Check for Issues. And so you can have it inspect the document. Yes, so, or I, I, I can save that now, that's fine. And so it's going to ask you what you want to inspect. I just say all, I'm lazy. And so it'll tell you, hey, here's what to inspect. Here's this metadata situation. And so it'll say, hey, we found this. You can remove all of it. And that's what you want to click on to remove all, and that will fix your metadata issue. All right, and actually I'm going to get into this and go back to the slides so that we can get to questions really quick. And then also I'll be giving uh, some last minute tips too at the end because I didn't get to everything that I wanted to. So don't worry about that. All right, let's do switch screen again. Hopefully y'all can see this. Da, 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 da. There we go. Yes. All right. So now we're kind of just going back here right before we get to Q&A. I really just wanted to make another shameless plug uh, when it comes to Smokeball. And I know I've talked a little bit about kind of what it can do, what automation is and things like that. So if you think you might be ready to, you know, dip your toe into the sands of true automation and what it can do and what you can do for what it can do for your firm, uh, we're going to launch a poll. And so feel free to answer that one if you would like somebody from Smokeball to reach out with you uh, with more information about what we can do. And essentially, they'll just do a demo. And if you are at all familiar with legal technology and the software that comes along with it, request as many demos as possible. This is basically going to be something that's customized to your particular firm to show you if it's useful or not, right? So if you have a family law firm, that's going to be drastically different, right, from a criminal law practice. So you really want your demonstration of this software to be catered toward your particular practice. And that's really all that a demo is. But truly, if you're looking for something to automate documents, to automate your time tracking, which was my big thing, I had a terrible, terrible time with that at my firm. I actually won an award a couple times uh, every month, a couple times uh, throughout the years for my inability to get my hours in on time because I was tired and I was lazy and I worked a lot uh, despite being lazy about my hours. And so there's technology that now exists that lives in the background of your computer that tracks what you are doing on what case you are doing it for and for how long. And at the end of every day, it will spit out a timesheet for you that you can just insert into a draft invoice. So you no longer have to keep everything on a spreadsheet or worry about it or figure out, you know, oh no, how long was I working on this Microsoft Word document, things like that. It automatically tracks it and it tracks it back to the client on which you are working. So 
pretty, pretty cool stuff. And then also too, if you're looking for something that's just all in one, billing, invoicing, workflows, which was a big deal uh, for me, and looking into Microsoft Word, especially in Microsoft Outlook integrations. Imagine never having to save down an email ever again, <laughs> which was my big thing too. Uh, we have all those super, super powerful integrations when it comes to Microsoft Office, which was one of the big selling points for me and my firm. And we're about to get to Q&A. And then some maybe final tips if we don't have that many questions. Again, uh, if you have any questions, make sure to click on that Q&A tab and I will go through those. But let me transfer it back to my other screen so I can show you. So let me see here real quick. There was a, a request uh, to show something again, um, how to assign a shortcut to an auto text entry. I'm not sure if you could show that at this point. Yeah, sing on auto text. Well, shortcut to an auto text entry. Oh, like as in if you wanted to just add it. So you would highlight it, right? And then you're going to, da, 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 da. yep, you would highlight it. And then let's say, let's go over. It'll be easier if we just do our insert tab. So highlight it, go to insert, go to quick parts and go to auto text, save selection to auto text gallery. And that's how you're going to do it. And you're going to label it as something you will remember in order to recall it. Remember, so it has to be something that you're going, it's going to jog your memory. Otherwise, you can open up the whole gallery and choose from the gallery. But it's always easier if you just remember what the name of it is for that particular provision that you want to insert. So that's going to be, that's going to be your big stuff. And then let's see here. I'm going to go through a few and then I'll give you the course number for this, I promise. But I want to make sure that you're getting as much value out of this CLE as possible. So I'm going to go through a couple more tips too before I give that and get y'all out of here and squared away for your day. So a big thing for attorneys and what we use too, a lot of times, uh, <laughs> right? A lot of times we type in all caps or we're copy pasting, we're using things where capitalizations right, are prevalent where it is in all caps. The problem is the default setting for Microsoft Word is to not autocorrect that. So for instance, if I say caps uh, with two S's, it's not going to autocorrect that. It's not going to tell me or spell check and say that it's wrong. And that's because the default of that is uh, non-existent. It's, it's, uh, the default is that it's not going to check that for you. So instead, what you need to do is fix this. So go to file in the upper left-hand corner, Go to options. Oop, where'd it go? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, there we go. Options is down. I hate where they put this, but options is down at the very bottom left-hand corner of that. So click on options and then go to proofing and then unclick this for the love of God. And then so it says ignore words in uppercase. Unclick that. So now it's going to spell check anything that's in uppercase. So click OK. And now you'll see that caps is spell checked. And so I can fix that. I don't know why that's the default for Microsoft Word. Makes so sense to me, but definitely do that. And then another thing that I wanted to show, and you can play around with that too, as far as proofing goes, actually. So let's go back to proofing. Go to file, go to options, and then proofing. And so there's a ton of stuff you can kind of play around with here too. Uh, I encourage you to read through these. I encourage you to read through autocorrect options too. That'll kind of give you, uh, especially if there's something about math, if there's something about, oh yes, fractions is a big one too. Sometimes it'll put those into like superscript and you don't want that. So you're going to fix that too. That's going to be on this, these tabs is where you're going to fix that because sometimes that would drive me bonkers. But the next is the, oh yeah, one of the biggest things is changing your default font. So let's say that you don't like your default font and that's fine. Nobody really does. But for me, a lot of the courts require that I use Times New Roman, right? So let's say now I need to completely change my default font. Fine. What you're going to do is open up a brand new Word document. So control N as in Nancy. You want to do it with a new document because the changes that you make are not retroactive. So I'm going to say that again. The changes that you make are not retroactive. This will only apply for new documents. So in order to change your default font, open up that new document and then look at font and click on this, as Adriana Lenaris would say, insultingly small button, and then choose what font you want as far as your default. So if you say Times New Roman, it's regular, it's going to be 12. Guess what? You can do that set as default. 
and it'll ask you, do you want to set it as default for this document only or all documents? And of course, you're going to say all documents, click OK, and that's going to be your new default font. So anytime you open up a new document, that's going to automatically be Times New Roman 12, which is lovely <laughs> because some of it just drives me crazy. Not The default font is not everybody's favorite. It's Calibri, I believe now. So usually I end up always having to put it in Times New Roman just because of court requirements and things like that. So that's how you set that default font. Same thing can happen with paragraph. You can make this default. So for instance, what we would always use for line spacing is 1.5. You can set that as default. And again, it'll ask you this document only or all documents. And you're going to say all documents because that's usually what you use for all documents is that 1.5. At least for our office, that's what we did. So you can make all of that default, select OK, and then you're good to go. So just remember that when you do this, so it is not retroactive. So it doesn't affect any of the documents that came before it, only the documents that came after it. That's going to be your big one. So let's just exit out of there. And another big thing too, before we get, yeah, we'll give you one more, one more tip. Okay, so this is kind of Microsoft Word adjacent. I use it a lot. And this is kind of the screenshot uh, snipping tool that is available if you have a PC or Microsoft product. So Here's how you use it. So say you want to take a screenshot of something. Let's just open this back up and we'll do a screenshot of Armory versus Delamiri. All right, so let's just say you wanted to take a screenshot of something on this page. Like maybe it's a picture, maybe it's just something that was interesting for you. What you need to do is hold down the Windows key, the Windows, uh, what am I trying to say? The Windows key and then hold down Shift and then S as in Sam. And that's going to kind of darken your screen and give you this little snipping tool. And you can click on whatever you want. And it's going to automatically copy that for you. And then if you go back into your document, remember you can paste wherever you want. And then I'm gonna do control V and it's pasted. So this is fabulous if you like to take screenshots or anything like that. Again, all you have to do is hold down the Windows key hold down shift and then hold down S as in Sam. And it's going to get, and it's called a snipping tool for Microsoft. So absolutely use this. This is really nice too. If you're looking at, uh, for some reason, if you're like family law, if you're looking at text messages, for instance, and you want to put some of those into a document that you're drafting, this is really great to just be able to take from iMazing or something, you know, copy it from there as you're looking at it and then just insert it into the document. So really, really great. Highly, highly recommend that so you don't have to keep clicking around for a screen capture tool and things like that. All right, so we're gonna go back to, I'm gonna share all of the information that you wanted. So let me get back to the PowerPoint here. Oh yeah, also shameless plug, but we are a member, oh, I already said this, but we're a member benefit provider for the Florida Bar. So please remember that if you do end up wanting to discover more about Smokeball, please keep in mind that we give you a 10% discount on our subscriptions, which is phenomenal. All right, your CLE information. So this, uh, this gives you an hour of general credit, but also technology credit. So the course number for today is 8195. So you will see that on the screen in front of you. Legal Fuel will also make it available to you too. I'm not gaping, gatekeeping this information, I promise. And then, oh, and we already got to questions. Let's see. Oh, I can do this real quick. So Andrea wanted to know, can you please go over metadata again? I want to see what I'm removing before I click remove all. Absolutely, yes. So hang on, let me switch over real quick before we do this. Okay, so metadata, very easy. Go to file, upper left-hand corner. And then go to, oh, where did it go? Oh no, it disappeared from my screen. Hang on, hold please. That's so weird, where did it go? Okay, okay, there we go. Oh, my mouse is back. Okay, so click file, info. And then you're going to click check for issues, inspect document. And this is what you're going to ask it to inspect. You can deselect anything, right? Just go in through and look at it. But essentially, I just have it inspect everything. Like invisible content, uh, document properties, especially is going to be one of the biggest ones. Document properties and personal information. So especially if your client was the one that was maybe drafting a document and sending it to you, because we've all had those types of clients, <laughs> and then you were working from it too, you want to eliminate that, right? You don't want their cl your client's information on that. So then you click inspect. And so it'll tell you, here's everything that we inspected. Here's what we found. 
So the big thing to remove, I would say, would be this. So document properties and personal information would be what I would remove for metadata purposes, because that's going to be the most, you know, identifying information at the end of the day is what this is. So document properties, author, document server properties, content type information, and tasks, just remove all those. And that to me would be the biggest one. All right, and then we're going to go back to these slides. Sorry to keep switching it on you. All right, so I think we're just about out of time. I really want to thank you for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions whatsoever, my email address is there. It's jordan.turk at smokeball.com. Uh, that QR code, fun, 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 is uh, linked to my LinkedIn. So please feel free to add me. Sometimes I have some cool things to say, especially about legal technology and AI and things like that. So feel free to follow me on LinkedIn. Also feel free to send me a message too if you don't want to uh, email me. But thank you so much to the Florida Bar for having me. Always good to be back here with y'all. And please reach out if you have any questions whatsoever.